Welcome to Excel Magic Trick number 1198. Hey, if you want to download this workbook and follow along, click on the link below the video. Hey, we got a great video here. Today we have date and units. And we need to figure out for each quarter what's the median units. Now we're going to set up a table with the lower and upper date for each quarter. So the first quarter will be 1-1-2015, and the upper date will be 3-31-2015. Now before I went ahead and created this, I looked through the column over here, date, found the min and the max. And that way I know how many total upper and lower dates to create. I have to go from the first of 15 all the way to the last day in 2016. Now I'm actually going to use define names here. Notice I, this column has the word date at the top. This column has the word units. And I'd like to name these ranges date and units, and then use those ranges in my formulas over here. So I'm going to do a cool trick. Highlight the field names, Control Shift down arrow to highlight all the way to the bottom. Now I could go to Formulas. In the Define Names group, do Create from Selection. But I'm going to use the keyboard, Control Shift F3. And instantly, it asks me, hey, where do I want the names to come from? Well, I don't want them to come from the left column, because then each one of these cells would be named that date. So I uncheck that, and only the top rows. Click OK. Now when I come over to the name box, now I have Date. Oh, instantly it highlights it, and also Units. These ones over here are from the answer sheet. By the way, this is a cool trick. If I click on this, it jumps over to the other sheet. If I click on the date name, since it's on a different sheet, I jump back over to the sheet. All right, let's create our formulas. Oh, but wait a second. I already used some ranges over here. Watch this. This is a great trick. I want to apply those names without doing it manually. So I go up to Define Names and Apply Names. Boom. It's instantly seeking out and finding the two names that apply here. When I click OK, instantly the two formulas have date. All right, now we need to keep create our upper and lower dates from these inputs here. The lower date equals the min tab. Now I need to go from the lower date all the way to the end of the month for March. So I'm going to use, hey, the end of month function. It needs a start date. And this comma months, if I put a 0 here, this would give me the end of January, right? But really, I don't want January. I want February, March, so I count 1, 2, and boom, there I go. Now I have the end of March. Now for the lower date for the next category equals that plus 1. Notice that's a relative cell reference, 1 up and 1 over, tab. Now I'm going to highlight and drag down. And because that's a relative reference, boom, it gets end of the month. Now these two formulas I can highlight and copy down. Come all the way to bottom, and sure enough, it got the last upper and lower dates for the quarter. Now I want to use the median function. Now I'd like to use the median if, because what happens here? I don't want all the numbers. I want all the numbers that meet these two conditions, greater than or equal to the lower and less than or equal to the upper. There's no median if. so. I could go median, and then inside the median function, I could use the if and use two if functions with array calculations. But that formula would require Control Shift Enter, a special keystroke for functions that can't handle array operations automatically. So watch this. I'm going to use a great new function in Excel 2010 and later. Aggregate. It does a bunch of aggregate calculations, and there it is, median. Oh, wait a second. The problem with this function, functions 1 to 19, 13 to 1 do not handle array calculations. It's only 14 to 19 that handle array calculations. Ah, but wait a second, we're doing the median. Percentile inclusive, percentile exclusive. If we do percentile 50%, that's the median. Quartile inclusive and quartile exclusive. If I give it quartile 2, that's the median. So I'm going to select this one right here. So the argument number one, please give me the function 17. Comma. We're actually going to filter these numbers using 
divide by zero error. So I'm going to say 6, ignore errors. That is amazing. That's the options, comma. And here's our array. We need to build an array that filters and gets only the numbers we want. Now, I don't need to highlight the whole column, because guess what? I have a defined name. So watch this, un, and there's the dropdown. That icon means function, and the gold dog tag means Define name. So I'm going to arrow, arrow. And when I hit tab, notice it's blue. And the range over here is blue. Divide by. And here we're going to build our conditions in the denominator. Anytime we get a true, it will think it's a 1, and it will pick the number from the top. Anytime it gets a false, which means it doesn't meet our two conditions, it'll cause a divide by 0 error. And that will be our filter to filter out the numbers we don't want. Open parentheses, open parentheses, because we have two conditions. Now, the first condition is going to be, please look at the date column. So I'm going to arrow down and tab. And now I have to ask the question of that entire column. Are any of you in there greater than or equal to the lower date? Now, that's a relative cell reference, right? So I'll get trues anytime it finds a date in this column that's greater than or equal to that. That wouldn't work, because that would just give me everything bigger than that. So I close parentheses. That will give me a series of trues and falses. And guess what? Normally, we can hit the F9 key and evaluate this, but it's much too big to evaluate in a formula. So we can't do that. You'll just have to think of this right here. Is that first date greater than or equal to this? False. Is the second date greater than or equal to this? True. So the whole column over here in our formula will have trues and falses. Now we need to multiply, because anytime we get a true for the first condition and a true for a second condition, we'll get an overall true. And the way you do that is multiply. That's called a Boolean operator. It is AND criteria or an AND logical test. Only when we get two trues will it dump a true into our formula. So the second condition, date, down arrow, tab, are you less than or equal to the upper date? That's a relative cell reference. Close parentheses, close parentheses. Now we can't evaluate this to see, but anytime it gets a true here and a true here, the multiplying will deliver a true to the formula. If we look over here, if we ask the question, hey, date, right there, are you greater than or equal to 1-1-2015? One, one, true. Hey, date, are you less than or equal to 331-2015? True. So because we get two trues, there will be a true there, which will then pick out this number. This one will get two falses, so we won't get any number there. All right, so now we have our entire array, comma, and here's the K. We chose quartile, so I put a 2. Close parentheses, and that will do it. Control, Enter. Double click and send it down. I go down to the last cell in F2 to check it. And sure enough, boom, boom, the cell references are looking right. It looks like our formula is looking right. And we even get a 747, a big jumbo jet here as the median for the last quarter. So there you go, how to calculate median for quarters using the aggregate function. All right, we'll see you next video.